19th century USA in less than five minutes. Government. The government for the states as a whole was called the federal government. It was headed by a president who was elected every four years and the elected Congress consisted of the House of Representatives and the Senate. The expanding pressure on the USA to expand westwards meant new states were formed. When enough people settled in an area, it could become a state and enter the Union. The federal government was a key factor in westward expansion, which always believed that the USA would expand from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. After the War of Independence, Washington became the first president. The new constitution was established very quickly, including the Bill of Rights to help it be accepted by the American people. In 1803, the USA bought Louisiana from the French despite only asking for part of New Orleans. In consequence, the size of the USA drastically increased and the states expanded. Society There was an enormous population growth which was common among all the 13 colonies. In the 1700s, America's population was roughly 300,000 and then by 1775, it was up to 2.5 million. Stratification in the colonies emerged in the mid-18th century. There was a small number of upper-class plantation owners in the south, and in the north a lot of merchants and lawyers. Farmers and small landowners had some power, then manual workers who didn't own land. Slaves had the least amount of power and were 20% of the population. Only one-seventh of northerners were church members, and even less in the south. Between 1730 and 1740, the Great Awakening resulted in renewed dedication towards religion. This movement started with Jonathan Edwards, who was the most influential thinker of the movement as a whole. The Age of Enlightenment, which was between 1720 and 1790, highlighted beliefs in liberty, so individual human rights, equality regarding opportunity, importance of happiness, progression, rationality and a representative government. In the early 19th century, slavery did not cause much conflict between the North and the South, but its existence as a whole undermined the USA's claims in the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. Economy Overall, more educational opportunities existed in America than Europe at the time, and also more opportunity for social mobility. Between 1713 and 1763, the growth of the American population and the economy created an increased demand for British goods. In consequence, Americans sought other foreign markets, which upset the British. Rising taxation from the British was a key factor to the unrest of the colonies and the start of the War of Independence. In 1776, Adam Smith wrote The Wealth of Nations, which was the most significant work on capitalism ever written at the time. It became the foundation of a free economy and competition via private enterprise. There was economic differences between the North and the South. The development of finance, trade and industry was on average greater in the North. Slavery expanded in the South due to cotton, where slave labour was ideal for keeping up with the huge amount of cotton in Europe. Geography. The period between 1803 and the end of the 19th century saw 30 new states join the USA as it went from a small colony power to an international country that spread from the Atlantic to the Pacific. By 1803, the USA consisted of 16 states and the Spanish remained in control of Florida, California and the Southwest. But then Florida was eventually acquired from Spain in 1819. The problem with expansion was if states admitted to the Union would be free states or slave states. Although America began acquiring vast amounts of territory, the land wasn't densely settled and there were many Native Americans living there who would be severely affected. Oh. <laughs> and the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. Oh my god. Oh my god.